what is up party people happy sunday glad you guys could be tuned in to another episode of ms um sadly guys uh because of the purple tear because covid uh rachel and i cannot be in the same building in the same room so um she's actually going to be in a cooler place than i am uh, i'm sure she's going to have decorations and all that good stuff behind her um but again we are super glad to be here with you guys today we have a lot uh planned for you uh we're starting a brand new sermon series called the best christmas ever just to give you a little hint um we got announcements we got a special video that we want to show you guys that is related to a couple people who made some big decisions that's another hint but um we're super excited i hope you guys are excited and today actually for announcements we have a special someone uh she is one of the leaders her name is code name is danny pack fanny pack and she's going to be bringing the announcements today so without further ado here is What's up, MSM? It is Danny, and I hope your guys' living rooms are also decked out in Christmas decorations already. For announcements this week, um, if you're able to join us on Tuesday, we got to meet Sam, our missions partner from Tonga, and we got to know a lot about him, how God is guiding him to, to spread the word, and some fun facts about Tonga, so that was pretty cool. For life groups, we also have it next week but mark your calendars on December 15th, so the Tuesday after next, we're gonna have our riot night. We're gonna have our Christmas party. It's a perfect time to bring out your ugly sweaters. Shout out to the many Star Wars fans we have in our um, middle school group. Make sure to bring your friends, and yeah, you have a lot of pl stuff planned, and you're just gonna have a fun time. If you guys remember, um, are the four bracelets from back at camp. Um, we still have a bunch extra. So if you want to gift um, some to your friends, to your family, it's a perfect little uh, stockings gift. So if you want to put in the chat or email Bryson or Rachel, I'm sure they'd love to send over some more bracelets to you guys. So as we break out our Christmas lights, once again, it's important to remind ourselves that Jesus was born to bring light into the world. In John 8, 12, Jesus spoke again to the people. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus provided a light for us uh, to guide us closer to God when he died for us. So whenever you um, put up your Christmas lights this year, uh, let that be a reminder to you guys. Um, that whenever you feel helpless or you feel lost in the dark, um, Jesus will always be there to give us light, to light up our path if you reach out for it. But I challenge you guys to ask Jesus how you can be a guiding light to people around you, whether it be your friends, family, or someone new. And whenever you pass by a Christmas tree, take a moment to thank God for the people around you who have brought light in your own life. I'll talk to you guys soon and back to Rachel and Bryson. Good morning, MSM. We hope you're having a great Sunday so far. At this point, we're going to transition into a time of worship. Um, but one thing that we're so excited about for December is that we are waiting on Christmas. And this year, we want to challenge you guys to really slow down and reflect on what it means that God is with us. You know, when Jesus was born, the angels were praising him. The shepherds were rejoicing and going out to tell people. And Mary was pondering and treasuring all of the things that were happening in her heart. Their first response was to praise and to bow down before Jesus and worship him. So this Christmas, we ask you to join us. We ask us to join together to worship God, to worship Jesus, our savior to praise him for who he is, to reflect, to slow down, to not get lost in the hustle and the bustle of, of Christmas shopping and, and eggnog or hot chocolate if you don't like eggnog and opening presents and giving presents. And we ask you to slow down and remember what it means that God is with us. So as we transition into our time of worship, um, 
we just challenge you to, to set aside distractions, to maybe even pause on the chat um, and just reflect on, on Jesus' coming, on the birth of our Savior. And following worship, we have something really exciting. Um, we have baptisms. And what better way to celebrate new birth, new life, um, as we get to join together in celebrating some of our students um, getting baptized and declaring their faith publicly in Jesus. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed only beauty remained heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace, so Washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. Release from my chains. I'm a prisoner no more. The shame was a ransom. The faithfully born. Of my dad, and he called me his friend. When death was arrested, and my life began. Oh, your grace is so free, washes over me. You have made. displayed on a criminal's cross and darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost but then Jesus arose with our freedom in hell and when
I grew up in CPC and I always knew deep down that I believed in Christ. I just always know that God is with me no matter who I am or what I've done. And yeah, I really enjoyed CPC Kids and I loved going there. It was a great community and now that I'm older, I feel like I understand Christ a bit more, so I want to get baptized now. Isabel, how you doing? Good. Good. Do you put your faith in Jesus to forgive your sins and to be your Lord and Savior? Mm, yes, I do. Fantastic. Let me ask you to put your hands like this, or if you're more comfortable holding your nose. Okay. Isabel, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. My name is Nicholas Wong and I'm an 8th grader. Um, my journey of faith kind of started uh, when I was 5 or 6. My dad was driving me up to Tahoe and like I said before, this is when I was very young. Before this, I'd always been taught to love God and that Jesus loves me, but I hadn't really taken that next step in my faith yet and like really understanding what it was about. And on this trip, I started asking my dad all these questions about Christianity and faith and all that. And he started answering um, those questions. And I feel like that was the first layer on uh, the cake that is my faith. Um, it was the beginning kind of of my journey. Fast forward to sixth grade, um, my class w took a trip to, a five day trip to Mount Hermon. And I believe it was on the second night, we were asked to lie down on the concrete um, at nighttime. And there were so many stars. And when I looked up, I was just blown away about how many stars there were. And it just showed how immense and beautiful God's creation is. So that's the first encounter I've had with God. And I feel ever since then, my faith has just been getting stronger and stronger. Uh, since then, I've been going to life groups for a middle school ministry. And the leaders there have really helped me. My parents have helped me, my friends have helped me. There's so many people that have helped me through uh, good and bad times of my faith. Uh, and my faith keeps getting stronger. It's kind of like if you imagine a tire or a wheel, once you give it a couple of shoves, it gets easier and easier to move along. And that's how I feel with my faith. Every, uh, every push I give my faith, it just gets easier and easier. Finally, um, I want to get baptized because it's a, not only a commandment from God, but I feel like it's the next layer of the cake that is my faith. Uh, I think it keeps, it'll build me up, kind of like um, the God encounter I had with the stars. And I'd like to thank my parents and my middle school leaders and everyone that's helped me along the way. So Nicholas, do you confess your faith in Jesus Christ in the forgiveness of your sins and is he your Lord and Savior? Yes. That's the best. Based on that, why don't you put your hands like so, or unless you want to plug your nose. Okay. okay, you go right ahead. Nicholas, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. Everybody. My name is Jalen Chow and I am in 7th grade. Today I am being baptized because I believe in Jesus. First, I would like to mention the people who impacted my life and showed me God's love. My parents are one of the many people who helped me build a better relationship with God, even through the hardest times. Another family that showed me God's love was the Lamb family who prayed and was worried about me whenever I was sick or in pain. One thing that changed my life was praying every night and thanking God for all the blessings He had given me. When I was young, I, had, I was diagnosed with low immune system and was in and out of the hospital with IV and had to go to the hospital every time I had a low fever. These scary hospital experiences taught me to trust more in God and trust more in the verse Psalms 23 verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. 
Today I am getting baptized because I believe in Jesus Christ and that he died on the cross to save my sins. I want to tell everyone that I believe in Jesus and that I am saved. I'm very excited to be getting baptized and that I can share that I asked Jesus into my heart with you too. At the end, I want to thank you CPC for helping me with my spiritual growth. Thank you. Kayla, have you made Jesus your Lord and Savior? Yes. Did you follow after him? Yes. Hi everyone, I'm Kayla Lamb and I'm 13 years old. I'm getting baptized today because I want to declare to God, Satan, and to people that I believe in Jesus Christ. First, I'd like to thank some of the most influential people in my life who have guided me on my journey of faith ever since I was very young. My parents are two of the many people who have spurred me on in my journey of faith. My mom always teaches me to apply what I have learned from the Bible to my daily living. My dad does family devotions with us at night and encourages us to build godly character. My twin sister and greatest confidant, Gabby, has also kept me on the right path by being ready with some good advice or comforting words. Another family who showed me God's love and had a big impact on me was the Chow family. They always prayed for me when I got sick or injured and always encouraged me when I felt discouraged or worried. These are just a few of the many people who have guided me on my journey of faith. I would also like to thank CBC for being a supportive church and having many programs for kids to help strengthen their faith. I'm learning now to trust God more and to believe more firmly in the verse Jeremiah 29 11, which says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. I'm learning to trust God, especially in this year with the pandemic and the riots. Something that has changed my life due to my relationship with Jesus is when I'm scared or worried or stressed, I pray to God and ask him to give me peace and comfort. Praying to God also helps me to resist bad temptations. Knowing God spurs me to care for more people in need. Right now, my family and I are sponsoring some children and I try to show them God's love by sending them little gifts and letters. I truly believe in the verse Isaiah 40, 31, which says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they will walk and not faint. I believe and know that God will take care and give strength to those who trust in Him. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins and that he rose again after three days. And that's why I'm getting baptized today. Do you put your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Yes. Awesome. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm 11, I am 11 years old, about to turn 12, and, um, I, I have been attending a CBC for, since I was a little baby. Um, I have three items I wanna share with you guys. Uh, I have uh, one, um, the CBC uh, uh, pastors and stuff, they have been helping me grow my faith in him. Um, two, my parents, um, they're, they're also helping me grow my faith and they're also, um, uh, helping me make the right choices. And three, um, I'm fortunate enough to go to a Catholic school, so so we have religion class, and my teachers are also helping me um, help my faith in God. All right, Trevor, we'll have you made Jesus your Lord and Savior and confess your faith in Him. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll baptize you. We'll baptize you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Spirit. Woohoo! Uh, my name is Katie Simmons, and um, I've been a follower of Jesus um, since I was born, I guess, with my family. And I grew up with Jesus, and I just feel really excited to finally give my life to Him and to claim that I am one of his followers and that I love Jesus. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Why not? 
baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What is up, party people? Glad you guys are here tuned in uh, for another Sunday. I'm not going to lie. It is cold, like really cold Uh, because it's December, guys. We made it. We made it to December. It's crazy. Uh, Probably doesn't help that I'm drinking iced coffee, but I'm cold inside and outside. Um, But anyways, I digress. Thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, it is an honor to be here again to bring the word. And we are actually starting a new sermon series. Okay, it's going to be awesome. Uh, But first, I just want to give a shout out to all of you. Um, This year has been tough. It has been shifting. Nothing's been the same consistent except God. Um, But just I want to say thank you guys for your flexibility, uh, for your consistency showing up to life groups. And uh, yeah, just working with us as we try to figure out ways to serve you best. Uh, It's been a crazy year, but I know we'll look back on this year and laugh about it. Um, So again, just thank you. Then that's from myself and the leaders and Rachel and really just everybody here at CPC. So without further ado, um, again, we are starting a new series. It's called, you guessed it, the best Christmas ever, the best Christmas ever. And there is a reason for it. There is a method behind the madness. Um, Just as we had said, this is your year. And it still is your year. We got to finish off the year strong. So we got a three week series plan for you guys. And we are going to, uh, again, finish this year strong and um, start off the new year. Right. So if you have your Bibles, I hope you do. I got mine right here. So go ahead, grab yours. Uh, we're going to be in Matthew chapter one. And we're looking at verses 21 through 23. And for you who do not have your Bible um, maybe with you, I'm going to go ahead, put this on the screen screen. Okay. All right. Oh, that's cam two and nobody's there. That's awkward. Okay. There we go. Still, it's been a year and I still can't figure out technology, but God is kind. All right. So the verse reads, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. This is the angel speaking Gabriel. Because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. And today I want to speak to you from that topic. God is with us. So if you don't mind, let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you, God, for the beauty of your word. And I just pray that you would use me as a conduit, God, to speak your truth. Uh, I'm just an echo to the voice. Uh, I pray, Lord, that uh, those who need to hear, um, that they would hear and that you would open their ears, God, and use my voice. Uh, We thank you, God, just for being able to gather today, whether it's virtual or in person, Lord, we are united by spirit. And we thank you for that hope and thank you for that promise. And thank you for the reality because of what Jesus has done. So God, we lift this day to you and uh, pray that you would be glorified uh, through this message. And it's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Okay, so I want to first start off with a question. If you can make this the best Christmas ever, what would you do? Now, I wish this was in person because I really want to hear the answers and, you know, with technology, the lag and all that stuff. But I'm curious if, if there was no restrictions you had no financial limits. What would you do to make this the best Christmas ever? I'm sure some people would want Frenchies. If you don't know what a Frenchie is, it's not a French fry, but it's a French bulldog. And my fiance and I really want one, but they're really expensive. They're like $3,000 a pop, but there's no financial limit. So you can get as many Frenchies as you want. Maybe it's the new PlayStation 5. 
Uh, maybe you want like 30 of them. Maybe you to make this the best Christmas ever, you want to eradicate COVID and just open up America and open up the world. I don't know. Or, you know, whatever you choose. <laughs> it really is whatever you choose. Um, I remember probably the best Christmas that I ever had was uh, for two reasons. Number one was because it snowed. Now, I live in a place where it doesn't snow. It, uh, back in Southern California, Temecula, uh, for the first time, maybe history, I don't know. But it actually snowed for like two minutes. And it was pretty awesome. Like, this is actually Christmas. It was crazy. But the second reason why was because that year the PlayStation 3 was dropping. I don't know if you guys used to play PlayStation 3. I don't even know. Hold on. No, you guys were probably like five. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, but the PlayStation 3, it was a big deal when it came out. Um, transitioned from the 2 to the 3 and the graphics and the speed and all this crazy stuff. Wireless controllers. And I was so, like, sneaky because I'd go to the presents a couple days before when they're all wrapped up and I would like peel the back of it just to see what it was so I had a feeling that I was you know actually kind of knew I was getting a PS3 and I pick them up and you know test the weight and all that stuff and uh yeah that that morning dude I ran downstairs almost fell and opened up the gift and pretty you know it was a playstation 3 and i didn't even open up the rest of my gifts i just plugged it in but that was like my best christmas ever that was something i remember and hold near and dear but if we're honest with ourselves not all christmases are the best ever they're not always what we expect depending on what circumstances you find yourself in uh there was this other christmas i remember I went to oklahoma to a family member's house and i'll not say their name for confidentiality um but I remember my cousin, he was getting all these gifts, getting drones and like a BB gun and all these crazy things. And I'm thinking like, OK, like, you know, about to get the same things. Maybe they got two of each. You know what I mean? And um, that wasn't the case at all. I got a pair of boots that were too big um, and some hand me down underwear. And I knew they were hand me downs because there was a hole in it. So I knew they weren't used, but like, I don't know. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm ungrateful. But as a kid, being in middle school, <laughs> you know, like I just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it, um, you know. And the reason why, in all seriousness, um, it was because that year I had an expectation that I was going to get something great. That year, uh, I excelled in sports. My grades were good. And I was really obeying my parents. So I thought I was going to have this fantastic Christmas. I had this expectation because I had obeyed and done certain things. I thought this was going to be the best Christmas ever. But it wasn't. Now, I have a question for you guys. When we do things, when we perform well, and maybe if we even don't perform well, and things don't go the way that we expect, does that mean that God isn't in that circumstance does that mean god ceases to be god all of a sudden that we question his existence because we performed to a certain measure and we didn't get what we thought we would get is a good christmas based off of good performance you see and the reason i ask this question is because the message of christmas is taught subtly and whether we believe it or not but it is taught subtly that if we perform well throughout the year we will be rewarded and if we don't perform well throughout the year we won't be rewarded now it makes sense because a lot of our relationships exist this way uh, if you do right by your friends if you you know share your hot cheetos at lunch or at snack or with your sibling and i used to love hot cheetos so if i gave you a hot cheeto it means i really love you piece of my middle school homies but if i were to give you uh, you know do something and, and, and give to people you would be accepted but if you were mean or god forbid you stepped into your humanity and made a mistake or said something you didn't really mean uh they would turn away from you and then the gossip begins and then you know splitting up the friend groups begins same thing with tests you know 
God forbid you get a 80%, right? If you, if, if you do good and get a 95 and above or you finish your classes with an A+, plus, your parents receive you well. They tell you how great you are. Your teachers want to give you certificates and all this stuff. But if you don't, and like I said, you get an 80% or you don't hit that certain standard that people put on you, then you begin to feel like a failure because now people withdraw their love from you. Teachers now want to, you know, they think that something's wrong with you. And even just to mess with your head just a little bit, right? We think that what we, we look at this as if it's a uh, vending machine, right? You put in something, you put in the right amount, you press the right button, you're going to get that result. But that's not how life always works. And sometimes we can do our best and have the best motives thinking that we're going to get something in return. But instead it goes unnoticed. Instead we're misunderstood and we're not approved. And see, the problem with this view that we have of Christmas or as the world has of Christmas is that we begin to take this and project this on God, thinking that our relationship with him is based off of our behavior. I'm going to say it again. We take this view of Christmas and we project it on God, thinking that our relationship with him is contingent or based upon our behavior. And quite honestly, if the story of Christmas was just about Jesus coming down to earth to reward people for good behavior or bad behavior, that's not good news. That does not distinguish us from other world religions. And in that case, we would all be the same. That, that, there's nothing exciting about that. There's nothing that people would die for about that. So today we're going to explore and look at the reason. Maybe there's another reason why Jesus came. Why was that reason? What is the reason Jesus came? Go ahead, put your answers in the chat, and I'd be curious to see. So again, with this passage, Matthew chapter 1, verses 21 through 23, before we dive in, we have to remember, um, before Matthew was the book of Malachi, after Malachi, there was a 400-year period of silence. God didn't speak. Just like that silence. God did not speak. He didn't say anything. And people were waiting in expectation for a savior to come as God had promised before that he, that savior would save the people from their sins. And maybe people, and you know, I would have an expectation. I'm sure you had an expectation. Well, if God is coming, we, we saw how he came in the old Testament when he showed himself to Moses, the people couldn't even approach the mountain or they die. And the mountain was shaking with fear. You know, uh, people were shaking with fear. The mountain was shaking and thunder and lightning and all this stuff. It was dramatic. So I couldn't imagine how was God going to come this time? Is he coming through the clouds? Is he riding through the sea? You know, what's what's going to happen? Our imagination can begin to run. And eventually he did come. But what was beautiful about it is he came as a baby. He came to a young, poor couple who didn't have any glamour. There was nothing about them that we should celebrate. Didn't deserve really any special attention. But Jesus quietly came to earth to save us, to love us, to die for us, and to show us the way. That's what he did, but our question is, why did he do it? And in verse 23, we see the answer as the angel gave to Joseph where he says, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, if Jesus's coming was contingent upon Israel's behavior through the Old Testament or even our behavior, there would be no reason for us to celebrate and 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 it really in reality he would not come because we know that in our heart of hearts something is not right and we keep falling short of standards but what does scripture say what is what is the overwhelming teaching of the new testament remember in romans god showed his own love that while we were sinners christ died for us that god so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. So 
what we have to remember is that he came to be with us. God came to be with us to be with us. It wasn't based off your performance. It wasn't based off what you can do for him. God within himself decided to come. And this is something that I think during COVID really shook the foundation of my faith because now we're locked in place. We can't do certain things. Uh, my performance for him. And I realized, you know, prayer was beginning to be really dry, really mundane. Reading the scriptures just was not nothing was really sticking out with me. I was being more preoccupied with eating and Netflix and playing Call of Duty than doing the things that I needed to do. And so I fell into this this state of depression. I was sad. I felt like God had forsaken me. I felt like God had really departed and was not a part of my life anymore because I was not behaving properly. I wasn't doing things. I wasn't seeking after him like I should be. And I promise you, the only thing that pulled me out of that was that I had to realize I was so focused on Bryson's righteousness. Bryson's righteousness, maybe your righteousness, maybe your performance, how you measure up to standards. And I forgot the whole New Testament teachings that it is by Christ's righteousness. It is his imputed righteousness on our behalf. And that because of that, I'm not only declared righteous in God's sight by faith, but I'm treated as that as well. And so I had to realize that I don't obey. I don't do things in order to gain God's approval. I've gained God's approval. So I obey. And that is the biggest key. That is what sets Christianity apart from every other faith tradition is the fact that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us in our place. And it is by faith you are justified. So we have to remember we must start with God's love. And during this holiday season, we have to start with Christ coming to earth. That the fact that God is with us. And it's not based off of how we did this year. And it's not based off of how we're going to do next year. But God is with you because he loves you. <laughs> and that's the end of the story. And it's hard to believe sometimes because I know how it feels because you're really not measuring up to standards. You're really doing things you ought not to be doing. And it's like, how can God love me? How? It's hard. But we have to take him at his word. So there's three things I want you guys to remember. Number one, during this holiday season, during Christmas this year, remember that God is with you. Sometimes Christmas is anything but merry and bright. And I want to speak to some people that this year has just taken a complete toll on you. And you've been kind of questioning your faith. You've had a lot of ups, but you know that you've had a lot of downs. You feel dry. You feel like God has forsaken you. I love in first John where he says, if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. God is greater than your feelings. We can't be a people who are just controlled by how we feel, though they are valid. And I don't want to to not value your feelings, but God is greater than our feelings. And so whether you have had a good year this year, whether you have had a terrible year with you, the fact is God is with us. God is with us. So during this Christmas season, whether you have a fantastic Christmas or you don't have a fantastic Christmas, God is with you. The second thing, spend time with him. Can't emphasize that enough. He died for a reason uh, to reconcile the world unto himself and being reconciled to God through Christ. He wants relationship. He wants to get to know you, not just through your parents, not just through us, not just through your friends, but he wants to get to know you personally. So take time. If you need resources, we have plenty of resources. If you guys want to do a Bible study or something, let us know. But spend time with him. Prayer. The things you know to do. Um, make it a priority. 
And the last thing is to remember to spend time with other people because we can't do this walk alone. And we will emphasize that we will continue to emphasize that it's important to enjoy, especially if you have a family to enjoy them, because there's a lot of people who don't have families and, you know, we don't have perfect families. They might be dysfunctional if the again, if the first family, Adam and Eve, was dysfunctional, you better believe that our families are dysfunctional. But we love them regardless because he first loved us. And so enjoy the 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 camaraderie of family. Enjoy the ability and opportunity to be able to share time with each other. So biggest takeaway today, remember that God is with you. That is good news. That is any any Christmas, any gift that you come up with can't match that. Why? Because gifts will fade. The joy that gifts give you will fade. You'll play like I had that PlayStation. I'll play with it for a little bit. And then the next year I'm on to the next thing. It grows old. It fades away. And like uh, Isaiah says, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And the joy that he provides remains forever. And the relationship that we have with him is everlasting. And it's not based off our performance. It's not based off of how we're doing. God loves us and God is with us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this Christmas season and thank you for Advent and uh, God, just remembering what you did and all that you went through to bring us to yourself. We weren't deserving, God. We were deserving of wrath. We were deserving of judgment, uh, but you saw to it that you would provide a way to justify the ungodly, that we could believe and put our trust in you and be made right with you, God. And that is great news. That's what separates us from everything and anything in this world, God. And so we thank you for that. We thank you for that hope, God. And I just pray that we would all remember that as we go into this Christmas season, God. That our joy is not dependent upon circumstances, but is found in you. And we're thankful, God, that this is the best Christmas ever because you're with us. And I'm, I'm reminded, Lord, of your words um, that you will be with us to the end of the age. And we thank you for it. In Jesus name. Amen. <laughs>